Hello and welcome to the first episode of West Underground here in this studio and we've got none other than Ed Barnes joining us. Thanks guys, thanks for having me. Sydney's number one podcast, West Underground. No worries, man. Welcome, Thank Ed. Yeah. Welcome to our new home. It's amazing. These like, are our digs. What do you think? I find it, like, sick. Like, the first thing I saw when I walked in was the neon sign. Yeah. And yeah. I haven't seen that before because I've watched you guys online before. But um, even just seeing, like, the Yellow Submarine DVD booklet, like, I have that in my <laughs> house. Like, you know, like, there's a lot of things that I forgot that I haven't seen in other people's rooms. But, you know, I see them in mine. I love the White Album photos. Like, yeah, there's so much stuff that I just see and I'm in, I love it straight away. Yeah. Does it feel like a like a French brothel to you? French brothel. I'm not trying to like incriminate you, I mean, but does it feel like a French brothel? I haven't been in one, but Me neither. I didn't know they were so Me neither. <laughs> Me I didn't neither. know they were so into the Beatles in France. But <laughs> <laughs> into French brothels. <laughs> so I thought they were more like um Patty Smith kind of yeah. you know, hipster sort of vibes. But so for, for context for everyone watching and listening, Ed, we uh so We've been trying to get Ed on this podcast forever, what yeah. feels like forever, and we wanted Ed to be the first guest in the studio since forever, right? And then the floods hit, so the studio was nearly done, the floods hit, Hamish had to start again, pretty much. Yeah. So we finally got Ed, and we we sent him a message the other day, and we're going to put this image in that you sent back, Ed. Ed was at his brother's wedding, <laughs> and still replied to the message about coming. Yeah, I was so uh, props to you, Ed, yeah, for that. Uh, you know what? Like, there's a thing about. Um, have you guys ever been in a bridal party? Yeah? Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Photos they take a long time. Yeah, it's yeah. a bit like I'm not. I had a beautiful time, but sometimes <laughs> it's a bit like you know, it's taking photos of the tree and stuff. You can have fun, but you know, you're able to check your phone at some point. Mm, yeah. But I was just, yeah, I was just kind of kidding around. Like, I was a bit like, I can't respond to this, but I can say i'm at my brother's wedding so i was during the photos i was talking it like that but i wasn't in the frame but um i like the yeah. idea of like when they get the the wedding photos back it's just you scrolling <laughs> on your phone <laughs> yeah exactly. replying to us uh, no it's a it was a beautiful time like i was just very quickly like oh yeah i really want to do that so I'll get, <laughs> where was I'll it at? where was the, where was the wedding at? oh was that um my I mean, my parents are like my family's Catholic. Mm. I'm an atheist, but it was that. Um, That's a nice mix. My primary school, church, yeah, where I went to primary yeah. school, I was a Catholic educated kid. But yeah, and it was actually very beautiful. Like I was. What are know, the names of Bill and Beck? Oh, Bill and Beck. Yeah, my older brother. Congratulations, Bill, Bill and Beck. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Hopefully yeah. we get to go to the uh, next wedding. Postponed with COVID. Yeah, <laughs> I'll introduce you to my other siblings too. I've got two other brothers. So yeah? Yeah. yeah. Um, Are you a musical family? So you're family? one of four? One of four boys, yeah, yeah. Oh. We're not a musical family, no. no. My dad, my dad's parents, I mean, my parents like music like most parents do, but, you know, it was mainly like just chisel greatest hits, you mm. know, stuff like that. Not, yeah. not, not like they disliked it. They just, you know, weren't that into it. And But my mum had... um which probably had a big influence on me. I would always have like um, Paul Simon's Graceland oh, and stuff wow. like yeah, that. Yeah. Stuff that I love. Like big albums, but she also had Band on the Run. Um, yeah. So like they're just two, you know, very popular albums, but I remember them affecting me when I was a bit of a kid. Like I loved them back yeah. then. But then I was in a bit like, um, you know, but then I, I remember buying Guns N' Roses but greatest hits when I was 12, but they still, you know, they didn't know anything about it. You know, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, so they, there's some music that they like, but there's a lot that they don't know about, you know, but, um, I suppose yeah. with like the, the wings band on the run album, I put that up there. It's like, as good as any Beatles record. Yeah. I love that album, For sure, yeah. and, but I only listened to that really discover that when I was like 16. Yeah. Mm. me too. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and then you start to look at like McCartney's back catalog and everything. And you go, really really good songs on that yeah album. yeah they are they're pretty even um it's a bluebird on there yeah but 19 
195. Five? Yeah, I was about to say no. It's so high. Yeah. yeah, and then even just Jet. I think Jet's like. Yeah. I think Jet is one of the most exciting songs like mm. written, like in general. Like I think I hear Jet in any situation, I just get pumped anyway. Like I could be listening to really fast music beforehand, but then if Jet comes on, it's like, yeah, Jet just gets me really psyched. I actually used to, um, I used to run. Like I used to be a runner. I want to get back into it, but I used to be a marathon runner. Mm. So I was getting obsessed with like listening to Jet. And that, would, that would always be like <laughs> loop. <first>. Jet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, but they'd always start off with Jet, but then it'd be like you know the clash for like an hour and a half after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, was that a humble brag about your marathon running time? Uh, there? I bit, felt like yeah, it yeah. was. I, yeah. I always, I always drop that in. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, you well, still listen I'm to Jet. Of, I'm holding one of these now. Yeah. But yeah. By, by the end of Jet, usually the race was over for me. I was number one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> nah, that's cool, man. And like I say, it's really good to have you in here. Like, I, so with, like, I, I kind of want to come to present day first before we go back. Mm. And your 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 latest single, I feel like, is relevant now more than ever. I feel like well, it's it, it's always a relevant subject matter, really. Crit- yeah. criticise the poor I feel like but today what's going on in the UK at the minute with the rail strikes and yeah. you know like inflation and people talking about wages and everything like that When I feel like when I listen to that song and I listen to it and I'm kind of a bit annoyed and everything at the establishment in the UK as, as it is right now yeah. it's, it's not a very good place the UK yeah. but to hear that song and then it's kind of like reflects everything you know what I mean uh, but for yeah. any generation that would be an important song I yeah. suppose I'm glad to hear that because I had to release that song like um before our Australian election cause yeah it was, it's obviously about Mr. Morrison yeah, like, yeah. It was, it's about just classism in general too um but yeah, thank you. I'm so, I'm so glad to hear that because I couldn't really put it onto a UK mindset. But it's the same with... Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm glad it's really re- stayed relevant, but it is sad that it's still relevant. Oh, of course. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. like it's going to affect Australia for, you know, the years that what those nine years of liberals did, mm. you know. Um, but yeah, I'm glad it's still relevant though for a bit. Um with especially with the rail strikes and stuff like that. Like yeah. I'm a, I'm a teacher yeah. and we're about to go on our third strike this term wow. pretty much next Thursday because I don't know, again, I'm just a casual, but teachers are buckling at their knees because they, you know, they're not yeah. getting enough support. And there's not, it's really like what's kind of ha- stemmed from the past nine years where it's like, there hasn't been much support for service workers or service mm. workers have been underappreciated, like nurses and stuff, you know, yeah. who are working service really aren't getting you know, enough recognition. And such a, well, it's just, and it's also like, um, what was the fucking, can I swear on this? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah okay. So yeah. What <laughs> was the, what was Scott Morrison's solution to that? A $240 payout. Like what the fuck yeah. does that do? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, it, it's, I can't pay my rent on 240 bucks. Like it's just, <laughs> it's so out of touch. It's just insane. But that's, luckily, I think that's the problem, isn't yeah. it? It is just out of touch. And as you it's, said before about the classism thing, it's, it's like yeah. constantly, yeah. You get a little bit, you know what I mean? You get the crumbs and they, yeah, they get the yeah. whole piece of the pie. And it's just even, um, like, I, again, I said before, I went to a, I was a, another wet place that song kind of stems from, like, in terms of how I feel, is I went to a private school. Mm. I did, I had, like, I went to a private school where they, I reckon, um, I'm trying to despise them too much, but they um, probably cared more about the blazers than the welfare. Yeah. You know, it was a very fancy fancy school. Um, but, and... It was more about, um, I just remember like poor was an insult at school. Yeah. What? yeah. Because the kid had a hand me down blazer. Like, is, yeah. is that, is that, is that why yeah. he was poor, you know? And it kind of just got me thinking, it's like, where does this all come from? You know, it's just mm. actually really comes from money and the people think who have more money think they're better than people who don't, you know? Yeah. yeah. But it's, and also when the governments aren't giving enough support to service workers who don't have as much money. It's really just, I don't know. I see this circle happening, really, is what I say, what I'm saying. I'm stumbling a bit, but yeah, I feel like I'm making a picture. It's, um, unfortunately, I, that picture is life. Did isn't you, it? Yeah, you know? exactly. Like it's, it's just, it's, it's the, people, the people that you need yeah. who are getting kind of the crumbs, like you were yeah. saying, like the nurses and stuff. Ed, you didn't grow up in Sydney, did you? You grew up. Oh, like I grew up, I actually, um, so I was a, I still, um, almost call myself a Parramatta kid. 
yeah, I was Sydney. Yeah. You were Sydney? Yeah, yeah. Oh, par- okay. I was a Parramatta kid, pretty much, um, until I was about 12. But then my parents and grandparents and my parents worked in Parramatta. My mm. grandparents lived in Parramatta. I spent like my teenage years yeah. going to gigs in Parramatta and stuff like that. But yeah. 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 For some reason, I thought you must have been like a like a country kid. I thought you might have been from like oh, the mountains. Or I'll something. admit. I'll admit. Um. So my I live on the acreage side. I grew up on the kind of acreage area of the Hills District. Yeah. So you know, like where Rouse Hill and stuff is mm, and stuff yeah. like that. So like ten years ago, that was like rural. Yeah. So maybe no, maybe like twenty years ago, and mm. that's where I kind of grew up around yeah. that area. But I was Parramatta before that. But yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned like the classism thing. Like I grew up in I grew up in Dubbo. Shout out Dubbo. You went to Dubbo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Went to public school, right? Mm. And uh, in primary school all the way up to year 6 and then I went to then I swapped and went to Catholic school for year 6. Mm. But when I went to like public school, when we were kids, right? You would pick on we would pick on each other for like, you know, for 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 saying stupid things or stuff like that was as kids. When I went to like private like like to private school, all of a sudden like I realized that my like it was like a, all of a sudden we were getting te- you would get teased on how much money that your parents had or not ha- yeah, didn't yeah, have. Yeah, it's my dad will fire your dad shit. Like it's um it's um fucking bizarre. I, I, it's insane. Like I, and I got that perspective when I did my first teaching prac as a teacher and I got put in a school where they couldn't really afford textbooks. Yeah. You know? And that was a bit of like, oh my god, like you know, I got a flash of perspective, you know. Um but yeah, it's just um I don't know. People like experience. Uh, it's like people don't really see that other side, you know. It's it's um, and I don't know. I feel like because I went to a private school, it's nice to be able to look back and be a bit like, hang on, like this was a bit crooked, you know. Mm, yeah. And, but as a teacher now, like I kind of stay in public school. Like I kind of that's where I feel like I, me as a teacher, maybe belong, you know, in public schools. That's yeah. how I get along because I'm pretty chill. But yeah, you don't really see much of that in public schools no before. it's not even you a don't. thing no it's not a thing it's 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 shockingly how much of it is not a thing is real you yeah. know even at private primary sorry even at public schools that like can af- like they're in affluent areas mm. and still like you know every student has a laptop i've taught in some of those schools that are public schools <laughs> but even still like there is none of that still there you know it's it's, it's i think like it kind of without that self-awareness of what it is it really does breed a bit of classism you know yeah, I feel like, but but I feel like I don't think it's all horrible. I just think there needs to be better ways to look at it. Do you, you know? do you think that comes down to? So Tony Blair did this in in the nineties mm. in Britain, right? It went from your working class, your labour, right? Usually a left, you know what I mean, you're a socialist, and then it changed, right? It went more centrist, and then it became a situation of well, you'll now be able to go on holiday, right? You might be able to get a nicer car. You're not working class anymore. You're middle class now. But you're not really middle class. Yeah, yeah. So when do you think that shift kind of happens in Australia between, like, the public schools where they might be in affluent areas as opposed to the real working class families who are in the lesser schools? You know what I mean? Um. Well, it's kind of, it's a bit, I mean, they're kind of, I'm not trying to, I don't really want to say where I'm working, but it's mm. like, it's like, um. I kind of work in schools that are very affluent areas, but... There is a lot of old money there. The yeah, yeah. So you got a lot of people of these areas that have kind of been able to, um, what's it called? Um, that over the few last few, maybe ten years, these areas have gone really expensive. Yeah, like the east, eastern suburbs of Sydney. Yeah. You know, where maybe fifteen years ago they were worth not much at all. Yeah. So you got a lot of these private schools in that same area, as these, and then you got where all these kids go to the really rich families. Then you got these public schools in this sort of area where all the kind of poorer kids go. The, yeah. the class divide is extremely obvious yeah. at these yeah. schools. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's um so it's, I didn't know that about Tony Blair. He kinda would like yeah try, try to kind of build him up from the middle yeah. class. It's like that's the stuff Biden's saying now. Mm. Um but it's really just a puzzle, all that stuff. I think um with the I don't know. I think it kind of starts off by getting rid of the classism. Yeah. I think that. I think also. I think with that private school Ghana, you know, kind of gather. I yeah. also think. Um, what am I saying? It's um, with private schooling, it's a. Uh, I don't think it's all bad. I think sometimes, and I think this sometimes as a teacher, like if you have some students who are, you know, some, who, 
you know, are interrupting the class very badly and so on and so forth. Like, mm. you know, kicking over chairs, like, you know, doing stuff 14 year olds do. <laughs> you know, really, really I miss, having fun. I miss They're doing that school. shit. Yeah, 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 shit. yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, yeah, exactly. So did I. But then you have some students who are like sitting down trying to learn the whole time. Mm. Sometimes I really think like maybe you know, the students should go to a private school and like, so they can flourish and kind of mm. grow while I can kind of focus on that. But then again, at the same time, I'm a bit like, why does she deserve more? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. more, and so also if kid. that kid yeah. was in the private school, would they be acting that way or would they have oh, those? I think they'd be a bit, I think they, they, they a bit, they, I don't think they'd be, um, as a, well, I think they, the private school would be like, no, we're not dealing with that. So yeah, mm. You know, it's yeah. a bit like where private schools are a bit like, okay, we can, you know, this kid has ADHD or something like that. Yeah. You know, let's take him outside, chill out, you know, give him ways work in blocks. Like there's ways to fix it. There's ways to work with these students, you know, but, um, yeah, I, I, it's a real, it's a real puzzle, that sort of thing with schooling. I, I feel like my view of it from when I was maybe not a teacher. Mm. So when I was like, um, you know, a student, um, of private schools, I, hate i was very much against them but now i'm a bit like okay now we just need to have a bit of a more conversation about yeah. this rather than fix this you know but the private schools and the in the public schools are going to strike together this thursday like oh really they're yeah. both a bit sick of the, the you know the conditions yeah. And yeah, yeah yeah but um yeah i'm trying um Something just fell off the wall. <laughs> Do you know what happens? No, you no. said you said public schools and private schools are going to strike together, and the wall went no. Yeah. Next Thursday, don't go to work. Don't go to work. Things will school. things will fall off the wall. Yeah, yeah. But uh, like, um, this only happens when Jordan's here. Yeah. But the truth is, in the end, I think like um, the main focus needs to be always the kids. Like, yeah, sure yeah. they're good. But um, yeah, it's just sad because sometimes this whole kind of thing happens. I think maybe private schools and public schools need to actually work together a bit more. Mm. You know, mm. you know. But um, it's it's crazy to me that teachers get paid more that like that work at pri like private schools versus working at public schools. Well, there's a bit of another thing that's happening at the moment too. It's um, for example, with this teacher shortage happening. Yeah. Like private schools are now offering casual teachers a much bigger sum. Yeah. Than private public schools are able to. So yeah. public mm. schools aren't being able to can't really afford casuals yeah. on the rate that they're being offered at private schools. So it even feeds into that. So now private schools are getting even more, you know, yeah. public schools are getting even more cut down. But um, I think with an Albanese government, maybe the budget might be a bit kinder because they had more funding for, um, the government had more funding for private, private schools than public schools last year. Mm, you know, yeah. Alex Hawke did that, I believe. But yeah. You know what was one of the most strangest experiences growing up was like I so I didn't last very long at Catholic school. Mm. I was there to like from year six to year nine, and then I went back to public school for like ten, eleven, whatever. Mm. So um, I went back to like well, I'm in year eleven at this point, and um, I've g gone to like a public senior college, and we just have like year where they do year eleven and twelve. Mm. And um, Tony Tony Abbott's come coming to our school. Yeah. And I was kind of like, cool. I've never seen a prime minister before. Yeah, this, yeah, is, yeah. This, is, mm. this is something that doesn't happen every day. Yeah. So like Tony Abbott came up and, um, and, and it was, he, like, he came up and he took all the, all the indigenous kids at our school, like he took them out for breakfast and lunch and, and whatever. And then they all came back to the hall. And when they came back, we were let out of class to go watch this thing where he's going to come talk to us. But all of our teachers are on strike outside of the hall, yelling oh, wow. and screaming Against and stuff. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And we're in there just going like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> like it just kind of felt a little bit apocalyptic. That's because amazing. <laughs> that's, that's quite cool though. That is quite cool. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, like, I just remember that that day being like, what, 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 like, you know, because I'm just thinking, like, it's the prime minister. I don't, I don't know nothing about yeah. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. you, you, oh, you, exactly, you grow exactly. up and you're supposed to love the prime minister oh, yeah, and all that, you know what yeah, I mean? And yeah, and it's just, um, that is amazing. That actually happened to Dominic Perrottet or an education minister, um, for New South Wales. The teachers left when they came in to do an announcement <laughs> in the school, yeah. the teachers went stri striked out the front. Um, but that is amazing, though. It's like, um, yeah, Dubbo. I, um, I've played at the Old Bank before, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you like it? Uh, yeah, I love it. Ryan McIntosh, yeah. I think, is the owner. He was like the, like a legend, most yeah. accommodating yeah. guy ever. I've got a funny story about Dubbo that happened with my old band. Um, 
So we were staying at a hotel and it was like 2 a.m. But we hadn't checked. It. We got our keys. We hadn't been in the room yet. But um, I was with... um. Um, who I was with? I was with Sean Anderson and Hayden. No, I was with Ben DeCosta. You know Ben DeCosta? He was an old drummer of Blackheart as well, but he drums for me now. Like yeah. he played drums yeah. and criticized before. Yeah, and um, it was me, Ben DeCosta, and Hayden. And we opened this door, like the key to our room. Well, the door was open, so we opened it. And there's just this machete on the bed <laughs> and nuts everywhere. And like, like, you know, the room was like fucking messy as hell. And I, I I don't know. We, we were so drunk that we were like, oh, maybe we should just move his stuff and sleep in here. <laughs> just, <Yeah. laughs> there was just this machete on the bed. Anyway, anyway, we we're kind of more freaking out. So we just like, um, <laughs> as well. So we just um, <laughs> left the door open and, you know, went, and Sean was sleeping in a bedroom that had one single bed. So we ended up um, getting all the couch pillows from the foyer and just putting them on the floor and then yeah. sleeping in there. It all together with Sean in that single bedroom. <laughs> it's just, I just remember freaking the like hell out with this just this machete on the bed you know with yeah. the door open and stuff like that did but. you did you see who was staying there no it's, no it we, sounds like uh, javier like, bardem's I character I don't in no s- country for old men. yeah I that's what that sounds like i do love dubbo but i was a bit like i <laughs> small town murder no thanks yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, a bit like, <laughs> I'm getting out of there but yeah. yeah a band from sydney has went missing in dubbo this week that's pretty much what it felt like yeah i was like a bit nervous about mm. it being, you know, those crazy scenarios you build in your head. But yeah. Uh, can I ask you, your influences really, when I listen to you, I am here and Billy Bragg. Yeah. Did you, when, when, like, is that, is that a thing for you where you listen to Billy Bragg or did you just end up I love Billy in Bragg. that direction um, on your own? So Billy Bragg, um, how I got into Billy Bragg was I was 16 and I started getting into the Beatles. I was getting into yeah. guitar lessons. Um, I got into the Sex Pistols. Mm. And I remember my guitar teacher was a folky guy. Yeah. He enjoyed folk music. And I remember I told him I want to learn all of Nevermind the Bollocks. Nice. And he was a bit like, you know, like, you know, it's like, <laughs> oh, for God. So, you know, after like, yeah. you know, but then he showed me a New England. Yeah, Billy Bragg. Because he yeah. was like, Check out this guy. He's a bit punky. He's a bit folky. He liked him. You know, he was a bit yeah. like, I don't want to teach this kid like, um, sex pistols for the next eight weeks but you know but he got me into a new england and then just from there like that first album that's like 16 minutes yeah it's like you know just uh great you know mm. it was just it was just really i was kind of getting into folk too like bob dylan and stuff yeah. but then hearing billy bragg you know there's something really special about seeing a guy like or a girl kind of be able to tell them give out hearts and feelings while they're while they're singing on stage by themselves to yeah. me. That's like yeah. really, just really, um, it's the, I don't know. It's the storytelling aspect of yeah, it, isn't yeah, it? You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's, but yeah, which side are you on is, yeah. I'd say it was a big influence for yeah. Criticize the Poor. Yeah. I was also a bit like, cause you know, Billy Bragg took that off a Pete Seeger song. You mm. know, it's like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it is a bit of folk music. It can be a bit of past the torch. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, Billy Bragg is up there as one of my favorites of all time. I, I yeah. love him because he's got the song. That's why the Scousers will never buy the sun. Yeah, yeah you right. know, like, and it's just everything, like, against Thatcher and the strikes and all that. Mm. And I can, mm. I can hear it, and it's not like when you listen to something, you go, "Oh, this sounds like that." It's not that. Well, it's not really. So- I can, I can hear yeah. the influence, but I can hear it in. In in your writing, really, you know yeah, what I mean. I can hear a, it in the lyrics, and I think that's a a really well, good thing. He's a bit um, I feel like Billy Bragg is like kind of perfectly poetical, yeah. But also perfectly not like you mm. know he's a bit real, you yeah. Know? He's not really like kind of, I don't know. He's he's got that perfect touch of aggression as well, but also personality. Mm. You know, it's like that greetings to the new brunette. It's like, yeah. living on ice cream and chocolate kisses. Like, <laughs> I just think that's like the most cutest line, but I don't even know what it means. Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Billy is like one of my biggest guys. I've actually like... Uh, I think I want to go to the UK next year and um, play some shows. But um, I know Billy's show in Australia has been like postponed like five times. Mm. Like, And I still got the tickets for that. Oh, He's really? Yeah. the first three albums in full. But Where, where's that at? It's at the M. More. Oh, yeah. is it? Yeah? yeah, yeah. It's first three albums in full, or the second three albums in full. I wouldn't, like, I wouldn't mind going to that myself. To yeah, it's, it's a ma- <laughs> like so first three albums. If like, anyone's watching this who's got a ticket, give me one. Yeah, I'm not asking. Give me one. <laughs> it's the thing is, it's like I'm actually sad. I'm missing out on the fourth, fifth, and sixth album, mm. even though I'm mm. seeing the first three albums mm. in full because they're all pretty short. But yeah, 
Yeah, Billy Ann um, is one of my top influences. And I knew you'd knew, but no, Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, straight straight away, man. Even, to be honest, like when when I was listening to your track, and so I, I read something about Frank Turner. You've been yeah. working with Frank Turner. Yeah, You've been Frank, wor- working on the tracks. Yeah, Frank Turner mastered the album. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, play, I played the show with Frank Turner about six what? years ago. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a festival in Liverpool. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was and they're, you, they're awesome as well man yeah do you know beans on toast too and stuff there's a kind of there's that kind of folky scene yeah grace petrie mm. you know frank is lovely like um i actually just simply emailed him that's how i got him to work on it because i saw he's doing mastering it's also affordable yeah. that's, yeah. <laughs> which is a big help that, that yeah. was like you know gonna be the whether i do this or not mm. um but um so he was also affordable so yeah and um i also wanted to get to know him but I've luckily had a few contacts over the years. Like I supported a woman called Grace Petrie mm. um, right before COVID. Like it was like the night before, you know, um, everything got cancelled. Oh, okay, I supported yeah. her at the Marrickville Bolo and she's from the UK and she was friends with Billy. Uh, so friends with, um, well, she was friends with Billy Bragg, but she's also friends with Frank. Mm. And then there was also Beans on Toast who, when my old band played with Flogging Molly, we played with Beans on Toast as well. Oh, and I wow. got to meet it. Yeah. I got to meet him. Yeah. And so I luckily just have all these like kind of, you know, connections with that big UK scene. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah no, it's cool. So it's I need to hop on. over there. It's like really folk cool. punk over there is just everything at yeah. the moment. It's yeah. just crazy. Even it's like, I reckon from 2017 onwards, you were starting to see it at venues across the board. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. And we, we used to play with this. There's a promoter I'll put you in touch with when, yeah, when you do plan on going yeah. over there. And, uh, yeah, they, they just had heaps of it. And it's funny because we were like a blues rock band. Yeah. But we'd be on the bill with all these, you know, like different genres and all yeah. that. But it was quite a, in the UK, it's quite a cool community of bands, to be honest. Yeah. Everyone's like a little bit different and mm. you kind of like go and ride the wave all around the UK together. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. Cool, it's, it's very much, um, well, it seems all very supportive. Like I've mm. actually like um, just even... You know, there's a band called Pet Needs who are on yeah. Extra Mile who I've managed to, I've just become kind of friends with over the just emails. Like, you know, mm. they give me a list of venues, a list of contacts, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, I will, I want to do that someday, but I think booking a tour by yourself and then doing, you know, I expected this from music, but doing it solo, I do everything. So yeah. <laughs> it takes a lot of time. Um, How were you finding yeah. it not being in a band? Like um, being out on your own kind of thing, you know what I mean? Um, well, luckily I have, um, well, still Ben DaCosta. Yeah. Who's with me and, um, Hugo Powell and, um, who I've always been with me by the hip with music and stuff like that. Even sometimes with writing and things like that. But, um, I think it, I think I learned so much in that first like six months of, um, you know, having to do everything by myself, like, you know, getting the artwork sorted, getting the events sorted, you know, but sometimes with gigs, putting on gigs is a bit stressful for me. Yeah. Mm Because like when you put on a gig, like. You know, you get asked so many questions, even though you sent out a worksheet. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's like, it's just like, yeah. you know, one of the four bands playing, the bass players just DM'd you on Instagram to ask if you can borrow your bass player's bass cab. And it's just like, oh, yeah. that time's like about 50 other things, you mm, know, like, yeah. it's just like, if you had a look, you know, you have the answer there. I'm not name dropping anyone, but yes, <laughs> you know, it's actually a good friend. Please friend. Do. Please oh, even, do. even a friend called me once to tell me that he's running late <laughs> to a kick. I was oh. like, and I was just like, man, I am so stressed right now to make sure that everything just goes ahead. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, it's not so much even about whether the people show up or not. It's yeah. just like organizing all these people my, by myself. My brother, I used to say to my brother, don't call me when I've got a gig that day. Yeah. I said, because I'm busy. I'm yeah, just busy. It's busy. Yeah, it's, and it's my busy. my old thing was, was a player with Bill called Stephen Gerrard, and I used to say, mm. Stephen Gerrard's not answering his phone on match day. Just yeah, don't yeah, call me. Exactly. Don't call me yeah. with your bullshit today. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? It's just it's just so um chaotic. Yeah, but I understand why people don't really understand why it's stressful. Yeah, you know, yeah. I do understand yeah. that part, yeah. but it's a bit like. Oh God, I'm seconds from like passing out. You know, until <laughs> yeah. until, until like that first band starts, and then. You know, like people are in mm. the room. It's like, okay, I can have a drink and relax now. Yeah, yeah. it only seems stressful though when you're when you're the one organizing the gig. If you're playing for somebody else oh, and yeah. you've been put on the set. <sighs> yeah, that's yeah. absolutely not like that's those. The best. That's why um every time those those get folked punk gigs and lazy yeah. bones on every last Thursday of the month. Like every time Joel Cook asks me to jump on those, I'm like, 
yep, let's do it. Mm. I can really enjoy this gig, you know, yeah, have yeah. a couple of drinks. And, um, but even still, like, it, it comes with the territory of, you know, being the playing as myself, but putting my name on every poster, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, it's like, I knew that would happen, but yeah, it's, um, because in a band you can yeah. hide away. You can delegate roles too. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Can I ask a personal question here? Yeah. Like, were you scared going on your like own for a while? Like, cause I imagine it'd be quite daunting yeah. being in a band. Well, I have to say like, um, um, so when I was 16, 17, like I played in my friends and I just had this garage punk band, you know, yeah. like, like it's actually a really good video of us playing rise above by black bag mm. and our school about the bands. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite videos ever. But, um, so I was always kind of writing songs as a teenager, Yeah. but then, um, when black art breakers kind of came along and asked me to audition, you know, it was a bit like, and play bass. I'd never played bass. I didn't own a bass then, but I was a bit like, I can do that. Um, but they were just, you know, playing gigs. They had a sick music video, you know? And then my first gig was the weekend I finished school was supporting radio Birdman at Manning mm. Bar. You know, I was a bit like, all right, I'm going to ride this wave for a bit. But I was always writing songs. But then kind of during that five and a half years of Blackheart, I got to almost used to being a bass player and not so much writing and, you mm. know, doing mm. stuff. So it was very daunting. And it took me to record my album probably about 11 extra months of just vocals because, you know, I was getting used to singing mm. again. But like, um, yeah, yeah, it was extremely daunting. Now, now luckily, I feel very... um calm about it you know but mm. i get excited but um more excited but yeah it was daunting at first like i had that first song which is going to be the lead single of my album when i like when it's released it'll be the single i dropped before it. but i had that song called hey no which is like my best song i think but i um i had that sitting in my drawer for three years like i didn't yeah. show anyone because i was too nervous to um you know, show people my own music. You know, yeah. it was extremely daunting. Yeah, even my own band best. members. <laughs> yeah, even my own band members at the time, I was too nervous to show them that I wanted to do this. You know, I felt a bit embarrassed by it, doing it. You know, yeah. But I always, throughout that time, I always listened to Billy Bragg and Bob Dylan, mm. and like all the, you know, Joan Baez, all the Troubadour, Troubadours. So it was always something I really wanted to do. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. But I just eventually got confident enough to do it. But yeah, it was very daunting. So what? What? What's the name of the album? Um, the name of the album is going to be Hey Noel. Hey Noel. Yeah. yeah, which is the name of the Cool, man. I like, that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. You can see me doing it live. There's a, it was the first thing I uploaded on YouTube when mm. few years ago. I was playing it live in my bathroom, but that's like the song. Best but, acoustics. Yeah, yeah. yeah Best yeah. acoustics <laughs> in the bathroom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's actually the playing live in, for, live in my bathroom because that's the best acoustic session. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, 100%. Like, yeah. yeah. 100%. But any, was, any, any vocal I do, like, yeah. I rec- I'll do it in the bathroom. Maybe we should just go do it in the bathroom. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if podcasting works the same. <laughs> yeah. but I, was, I, I felt that. Um, but yeah, so it was daunting as hell. It took me a long time to kind of mm. get an eye up that courage. But also, even still with music, I believe this now, like playing live, I think I can bring my teacher kind of my teacher sort of work into it, but I, I seriously go out there and just fake it. If I'm like, I'm normally shitting myself, but I'm just like, all right, time to pretend to be confident. You mm, know, yeah. I think a lot of people do do that too, but it's just all we, part of an act. Hamish and I had a conversation about that once. And I said, like, usually by the first chorus of a song, I'm, I'm me then. Yeah. yeah, totally. Up until yeah. that point, I'm somebody else pretending mm. to be me. Yeah, exactly. And also I think even like when I'm playing solo, the talking shit vibe needs to be, you know, you have On to point. be you have to be good at talking to a crowd, mm. especially yeah. when you're by yourself, and that looks so good to crowds. If you're a lovable guy, and you've got like I think it was at the second gig I played, it was a second solo show when I played with that Grace Petrie from the UK, and there was like 350 people there from Marrickville Bollocks. You know, it was my second solo show, and I I look back and I'm like, Jesus Christ, what was I was I doing? You know, because <laughs> yeah. it was my second show, but like it was like still to be able to um. I don't know. You have to be on point. If your jokes yeah. aren't landing, it's like just shut mm. up and play the song. You yeah. know, like yeah. it's, it's which just, is which is like fun for me in Australia because nobody can understand me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that's it. I think like even like um, I've been talking to some friends. It's like, geez, I think if people who know me will probably cringe when I say this, but it's like I've almost been tempted to write comedy because I write a lot. Well, of you do my- though. Like I, I think you do. Tr- like. If, yeah. if I'm not wrong here, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you d- do to a degree on your Instagram and stuff. Yeah. Like, I think you're ex- like experiment with it. Cause I'm like, well, 
with your stories and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to my best to chuck humour into everything because mm, yeah. I think I think sometimes things can get a fair bit too serious yeah. with music and stuff like that. But yeah, I do like to, if I come up with a joke, just just put it out there. Don't even think twice about it. Yeah. Know? But yeah, and especially live, I feel like I, I actually kind of almost prepare my jokes. I actually sometimes at times work more on that than I do my music. You know, before a gig. Does anyone ever like think you're like really try like <laughs> being serious? Like, does anybody has anybody like sent you a message back thinking that you're like? because oh, you're ve- Adam very Adam Sandler like, doing songs so, yeah, in his sets. Have you seen like it's very like yeah, sarcastic? Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. can say. Well, it's just um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, at times, like for example, like the other day, um, I was wrapping a wedding present for my brother, mm. and. I was getting the shits at like gift wrapping, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, like, cause people get so obsessed with saying, no, you got to do it like this, you know, and whap a present. It's like, it's fucking getting ripped off anyway. Like, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I put up a rant. I was like, why yeah. don't you just grow up, you know? But I had some people message me, you know, like it's always in good nature. I like to be like, <laughs> the satisfaction of good gift wrapping is fucking amazing. You know, <laughs> I've never, I've had some people kind of react seriously to me, you know? Like, who didn't really see that I was talking shit. It's like, I never, a time I put on my story and I just posted his response because it was funny. But I said that, like, when Disturbed writes songs like Sound of Silence, it gives me hope for the future of music. <laughs> and they'll just like, it's a, not a Disturbed song, it's just, it's a Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. 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 And every time that thing sort of happens, I'm like, yes, I've caught one. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, <laughs> and then it's just like, Hawk I tell him not to believe everything yeah. he reads on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. a Disturbed song, you know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, um, I don't know. If it, I feel like if it annoys people, they just kind of, you know, they can skip the story. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. cause I'm watching this thinking, oh, somebody's going to like, going to gonna gonna fall in. in, in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trap. yeah, exactly. I have friends who get annoyed when other people fall into my traps, mm. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, sometimes people come up with actual points against me and I'll be like, oh, yeah, whatever. I really wasn't being that serious. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I think I think that's important. Like, if if your if your music has got a serious message, yeah, you don't have to be serious with it. No, oh, exactly. You I know feel what I, mean? I feel that's very um, uh, it's sometimes a bit like I feel like with singer songwriters though, mm. uh, I feel like you really need to have a personality, otherwise it kind of oh, one hundred percent. Unless you unless you somehow manage to be yeah. a mysterious Bob Dylan type, yeah, you know that's really hard, but. I feel like um, you got to have some sort of personality. Otherwise, it's just, you know, just playing there, playing your songs, but almost trying to be boring. Mm. It doesn't mm. work. Um, even like, you know, and it works for some people, like Courtney Barnett, for example. She doesn't try to be boring, but she has personality still enough. You know, yeah. even though she's like quite, you know, just stands there and plays like not really with much emotion, but she does have emotion. You know, you can kind of tell her personality. But, um, I think like sometimes when I see bands taking themselves too seriously, I'm a bit like just chill, you know. Mm. You know. Yeah, it's always weird when you see bands taking themselves like like too too seriously. Do you know what I mean? It just feels like you you're playing music, just relax, you know. Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And like, I, I at least have fun with it, you know. Yeah. I mean, I feel like um, when it's a career, that's for sure. But also, you got to have like things can be a bit serious. But I feel like um. Like Ben and I talked about this. Like I had some friends reach out to me like from who were like, how do you deal with, um, because there's a, there's a limit to what fun you can have, you know, how do you deal with your bandmates not being on time or like, you know, not being good, you know, not being practiced on stuff like that. Mm, and maybe, maybe they might be a bit too drunk, you know, before yeah, they play and stuff like that. So there's a limit to what fun you can have. But I was a bit like to this person, it's like, well, the thing is, um, luckily with the bands I've been in, and the people I still play with, we're all like serious enough that we don't want to mm. fuck up for each other. You know, we're pretty on point. But yeah. then that's when you can have fun. You yeah. know, when you're when the music comes first and the performance kind of comes first, that's when you can start having fun with it. You know, not so much having fun that like um, you know, you look super serious and stuff mm. like that in photo shoots and things like that. But um <laughs> I, or, I, I, or, I, I, or I one's looking at the camera one's not looking at the yeah, camera yeah. one's looking at the floor one's look yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. one's smoking a ciggy one's like you know it's just um i feel like yeah i feel i feel like a lot can get a lot of fun can get lost if you guys take it too seriously mm. you'll yeah. take it too seriously you know relax it's just frankies you know yeah. <laughs> sometimes it's a bit like mm. but um 
But that being said, I think I think um when if you're all on the same level of like wanting to Wave be length. good, yeah, 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 that's when you can have a lot of fun, you know. Yeah, yeah. Because when I when I say that, I don't want to mess up. I also don't want to mess up for my other band members. Yeah, well, yeah. It's a, you've it's got to treat thing. it as a job, yeah. haven't you? You know, like oh, exactly, not yeah. being fucked up. Yeah. And knowing your parts and all that is... Well, and the thing is, when my friend said that to me, like, how do you tell them? It's just like, how do you tell your band members to pull their heads in? It's like, yeah. well, I never had to, luckily. I've never mm. had to do that, you know, because it's always been like yeah. this first. And that's kind of the survival to longevity. Like, yeah. I, I, when I was saying I left Black Art Breakers, I left it because I wanted to pursue my own music. That was mm. the only reason why I left, really. But, um, so, but there was no saying, no doubt in that we were like all hardworking kind of like, but had so much fun because we were a bit like, all right, we're not going to mess up tonight. We're going to be yeah. the best band, but we're also going to have a lot of fun, mm. you know? Um, but yeah, I do think people can t- really take themselves too seriously with music. It's now, if you go on the road with your with your band, right, and you start yeah. you know, going around tour and playing shows, you know, are you going to, are you going to be the James Brown character that, that um, starts giving out like fines if they're, if they're, if they're late? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you'll um, be such a teacher about it. Yeah, a teacher, I'll be yeah. a teacher. Oh, so I'm a pretty chill guy, but then there's sometimes I get a bit, like a bit. I can get a bit personally writing scary. the name, oh. writing the name on a whiteboard. One tick for minutes. you, Justin. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I do that right, and they don't even know what the tick means. I don't even know what the tick means, but they all kind of freak out. You know? <laughs> oh no, we got a tick. We got a tick. Yeah, it's year sevens are so funny to mess with, but it's um, but um, um, yeah, I think um, I do hold a standard a bit, but I've never had to even like kind of tell them that. You know, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I mean, at least I've played with Benjamin and Hugo for like years. You know, yeah. so yeah, I've never really had to um put them on a whiteboard. No, never, never, <laughs> never. Um, Corporal punishment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if something ever happens, like it's a bit like, you know, maybe like a conversation, a short conversation mm. afterwards is all we need. You know, yeah. but we've never had that. You know, if so, if one of us messes up, it's like, well, you messed up. You know, it's a bit, yeah. but you know that yourself, so yeah. you work on it, yeah. and then kind of the next day, it's fine again. With, with, with this album, when are you, when are you gonna release? <sighs> well, I've had some. Um, I can't say too much, but I've had a couple of meetings with labels. But then it, now it looks like now it looks like I'll be doing it solo again. Mm-hmm. Like my next le- le- rec- my next label album would be yeah. on a label. A lot of them were a bit like. Um, well, we normally work from artists from when they re- start recording where you've already got your album artwork sorted. So, mm. you know, you're a bit mm. way ahead of the gun where we're not, you know. Um, so I'm thinking maybe March next year is when I yeah. actually release it. I'm trying to give myself a lot of time because I feel like, you know, I'm finishing my, I'll, I'll be finishing my university degree this year and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of other things and I want to be able to do it properly. So I'm giving myself to March next year because I want to do vinyl. You know, I've done an album, you know, it's like, yeah. I want to enjoy that. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Rather than just kind of push it out onto the internet, you know, without putting too much effort into the PR because yeah. the PR is like the, sadly, some of the most important <laughs> parts of music now. It's really oh, just, 100%. It's just like, it's just, it's just, it's just kind of, um, especially as a solo guy. What right. does a label do now? Like, I just it, want, I wanted money for music videos and, Oh, album okay. So they'll give album. you. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was after a bit of like that yeah. sort of stuff because, like, I mean, like, we've, we've started to criticize the poor video. It was quite, you know, it was done on a handy cam. Like, mm. the cameras here are more, like, way more more equipped than that was. But, you know, I like those music videos, but I, I kind of wanted something very flashy, mm. but that's a bit like, you know, <laughs> yeah, as yeah. a solo musician. It's in the price uh, bracket. That's what yeah, you're it's a, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, but, um, yeah, they were kind of, I was just chuffed enough that they were like talking to me because my songwriting chops are good enough. You know, I felt yeah. really um, excited about that. But yeah, so the album's next year. Um, but my next single is July 15th. Um, it's called All Things. It's about, it's not even like really like my favorite song off the album or mm. anything, but um, Criticize the Poor I did because of the election. But All Things, um, it's about splitting records with an ex-partner. So it's like, you can take the Beatles. Out. I'll play it later. I brought because I got brought, brought my guitar, but um, it's just the one I get like whenever I play it live, people always come and talk to me about it after. Like you yeah. say, they love that song, yeah. so I was like, all right, I'll release that one. It's the cheapy, it's the kind of poppiest song I have. Yeah, but yeah. Um, but yeah, and then I think I'll drop that song Hey Noel um right before it the album comes out. You know, that's my big send off for it. Yeah, the coming out party. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the coming out party. <laughs> coming out party. <laughs> Where the however you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, so what's your plan of like if if you're gonna do your own 
P- PR for it? Like how how do you how do you kind of go about that as oh, a solo PR. artist? I mean, I mean, I t- I get I have a PR guy. Yeah, a very good guy. But still, I just find like um like for example, you saw I had a Rolling Stone article. I seen that, that man for yeah. my debut release. That's just insane. Yeah, like, you know, not not many people can get that. <laughs> yeah, so my PR guy was able to do that. So it's it's one of those things I think just with PR because it's always a bit of a gamble. Mm. At least not with my guy. I know he can yeah. do it, but still, if you spend like you know, it's expensive. Like it's like yeah, nine hundred bucks. Boom. You yeah. know, it's like yeah. you, you can't we can't really. And when you're a solo artist, you you have to take that gamble. Otherwise, it will just yeah. You know, it won't go anywhere. It's well, that, like that's it's, the thing. Though, and isn't that, it? And you now, go and record that song and spend thousands of dollars recording. You have to spend it on the PR, and yeah. then you should spend it on the PR as well. You, you, know what you mean? have to. Yeah, 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 for sure. It's like nine hundred bucks for one song. Yeah. You know, it's like that's actually quite a good yeah. funding for it. Yeah. Well, I and mean, I watched a video where like rappers and stuff are spending a hundred and hundred and twenty thousand minimum on major labels <laughs> to get their like get their music yeah. even even to be thought about the charts. Mm. Yeah, exactly. It's it's such a um. I don't know. It's a very scary thing. But then again, the thing is, like, once you kind of go into what I'm finding with it, for my debut release to get play, get put on Rolling Stone, I was then able to get it played on FBI. Mm. You know, it's like, it's, you can, then now after I've been on FBI and I've been on Rolling Stone, the next single, it's going to be kind of bigger. You know, yeah. I can, I can aim, start aiming higher. Yeah. You know, so I think PR, it's like a, it's, it's a worthy investment. Otherwise, mm. if you just kind of keep releasing stuff yourself over the next, few years you know and doesn't really build you still kind of got to get to that step one of the mm. rolling stone mm. and a lot of people kind of tell me it's like asking me how i did that and stuff like that but i'm also a bit like uh, i've been in music for like five plus years you know like yeah. since with my old band and stuff mm. like that i've been around so i do know people but um and people know me but yeah it's pr is just it's kind of a bit of a scary Huge. world yeah, yeah. it's a kind of gamble. and you never know who to go with as well like there's probably yeah a lot of young bands or even Oh, you know, bands who've been around for a few years, you're worried on spending that money and it not hitting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, mm. it is, it's it's a daunting thing. Well, the truth is now, I think now, since I'm now primarily a songwriter, I'm even, I'm, I think now it's like, I think, I truly believe if you have a good song, it can just cut through all the bullshit. Mm. You know, I, I, actually, yeah. I do think that some people do have hits. It, like, like I was talking about that Beans on Toast guy. Yeah. yeah. He has a song called MDM Amazing. It is like his, what the song that he just released and it just kind of yeah you know like, oh, don't get it, me wrong you might release a song and spotify go wow yeah exactly yeah. but yeah, the chances just, of, of that the chances of that i think know? good songs can cut through but i think like but i think you've got to have some kind of like you like, still need a team a, like yeah. action to get it to get a bit of reaction do you know what i mean yeah, you still yeah. got to have that little something in the background kind of kind of pushing it to give it a bit of momentum oh, for, for them sure. to yeah yeah, especially with playlisting now, like being the most prior, biggest priority. Like it's, it's, the, the playlist is. I got put on was um Frank Turner's, and yeah, that was sick. Like he shares it, but I had like you know fourteen hundred streams for a political song for my first single. Mm. Like, I was pretty stoked about that. I'm actually I'm pretty stoked about that. It got played on FBI and some other joints and stuff like that. But it's a bit um. Yeah, and there was a bit of label attention because of it. So I'm a bit, uh, I'm pretty damn stoked with how everything's yeah. going so far. You know, are you worried in a way? Be in like, I, I like, I'm just, I'm just curious because I mean, mm. I, I would be in the sense of like, if you write something right and it, and you, con- you connected it and you wrote about something that was happening in the world at that very moment. Mm. So I mean, it was, it was, it was relevant and it was with the times. Mm. Um, we, are you. And and I I suppose that kind of helped the momentum of the track, whether yeah. you know a little bit, and like moving forward now, mm. are you, are you, does that like kind of like sc- like scare you a little bit, like because you now writing putting out your own music that doesn't have like a you know a context to what's what's happening in the wor- world. Well, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, I know yeah, what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, I've, well, I think these songs are kind of a bit more relatable. Yeah, to, like that was like my one kind of most punk rock mm. kind of political track on the album. So, um, I think the rest of the songs are pretty, a bit more relatable, you know, like, um, like there's a song in there, like called all my fucking love songs and the same, you know, there's a couple of like, nice. yeah, there's yeah. a bit more like, um, you know, more general songs, you know, rather than just kind of 
pointing out the times, you know, mm. like like a signifying moment in history. That's why I had to release that before the election. Mm. <laughs> you yeah. know, I was kind of tempted. To, I, I was expecting to have other singles out before that song, but then I was like, shit, two months, I have to put this out, yeah. you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't expect that to be my first single at all. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Um, well, what a debut, though, to come out and be, you know, yeah. a social commentator on your first just, single. Like, yeah. Fuck, that's it feels weird now, like, having a government. Like, I'm just not used to it. <laughs> like, no, but just even the talking <laughs> with a... Like, even if you like him or don't like him, like, he's talking with a bit of humility, you know? It's mm. like, yeah. It's like, it's just it's different, you know? It's like, I read that... Um, I, I, I was... It was like I was obsessed with Scott Morrison or something like that. Like obsessed in like all the like, just kind of like, how the fuck? He's such a game player. You know, I was mm. getting so frustrated with it. He is such, and I read this book called The Game by Sean Kelly. He was a Sydney Morning Herald journalist. And he wrote yeah. this book of, on Scott Morrison called The Game. And it's just a thick book about how everything he does has just been a political game, mm. you know? And uh, that was just, I don't know, to see going it from like where, where everything was just a game to... Anthony Albanese where everything's a bit you know mm. a bit more genuine mm, you know yeah. it's like it's just such a breath of fresh air you know it's yeah just, oh god yeah. Oh, we, we, we'll, we'll see good. we'll see what happens with the time of it Mark. Oh, like, of course I'm, yeah you're I'm, talking about Tony Blair so a lot of you, people you know what I mean like I'm yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm of the belief that real politicians or we, we've had this conversation Monday Night View before like the real politicians the people who are actually public servants yeah, that's, yeah. that's gone the public serving thing and it's it's like career politicians now and I, I, I don't I, do. I don't really think any of them care that if I just, and, and it's, yeah. it's a sad way of looking at it because I had Jeremy Corbyn a few years ago in the UK and I was like Fuck, this man's going to change the world yeah yeah Bernie Sanders is going to change the world yeah. and then they never get an opportunity and you know yeah, Murdoch totally. shuts them down um <laughs> but like so oh, Google <laughs> <laughs> oh, for sure. I, I agree. I just think it's like kind of, um, I feel like there's a, just a bit of a shift of attitude mm. change. So mm. like enough, you know, enough that it's like, I'm a bit like, let's make politics boring again. <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah. You know, it's a bit like with, um, I don't know. Like, I feel like what's well, the fish rots from the head. Like, you know, mm. you're saying before how you grew up to love the prime minister. Yeah. Like as a kid, like it was, whether it was Tony Abbott or John Howard, you know, I thought John Howard was cool when I was 12, you know, oh, like, me it's too. Like, yeah, it's just I, like, I, to be honest, I like there's There's only, there's only two liberal politicians I like. And that is, I like John Howard. Cause yeah. I remember he used to walk around like Sydney and yeah, people yeah, yeah, used yeah, to yeah. walk around with like, mm. with John Howard. And then I, to like, I, I liked, I liked Tony Abbott in a way because he would, he went on the front page of the daily like um, Telegraph in his like budgie smugglers and just and yeah, just a bit of no, <laughs> yeah yeah there's a, there's a bit of um there's a bit of charisma there you know that's, a, that's a <laughs> and the, guy, and the guy was just the just answered like he was just a laugh like you know, it's, yeah. it's probably not a good thing it's you know but it was fucking hilarious to watch I remember one day I'm sitting at I'm sitting at home watching <laughs> watching the news with my family like just eating my mm. you know my spaghetti whatever. And um, and I see Tony Abbott. He's on the news, right? And um, horrible. The, the, you know, like Australian soldier was killed in Afghanistan. But the context of this, they asked the priest, Tony. They're like, um, you know, a, we've had a soldier that was killed in Afghanistan. You know, uh, what what what's going to happen as a course of that? And um, he looks at them and he goes, "Shit happens." And oh, I remember wow. just just being like. Yeah. So shocked to the core yeah, yeah, yeah. that that He's like that bit... this was that this was real life. Well, I do think politicians are a bit psychopathic. I do. Like, you've got to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all of them. Yeah, you've yeah. Got to be. Tony, yeah. Tony Blair, like I say, man, yeah. I, I was a kid and I was like, "Isn't it good, Mum? The work that he's doing in Iraq." <laughs> Boy, was I yeah, wrong yeah, about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm. Same with us. So boys. I yeah. think I think time will soon tell. I think it's a good thing. Uh, like I, I try not to pay much attention to Australian politics because yeah. we've got enough stuff to worry about in the UK. Yeah, but living exactly. here, like yeah. it's 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 you know, Hamish's reaction to that win was I was happy about his reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I think, just, you know, you've gotta you've gotta see if anything will change and you've gotta be optimistic about it. And I, I think mm. I think especially in the arts, yeah. Seeing the oh, way yeah. the art has been treated what you've had here for the last nine years, hopefully that'll yeah, you know, yeah. improve. Yeah, that's another, yeah, totally for that. And also, um, 
I just think it's a bit more of a positive kind of respectful mm. conversation now. You yeah. Know? It's like, it yeah. becomes less of a game. I think more a bit genuine, you know, mm. it's again, just talk about talking about with a bit more humility is just enough, you know? Yeah. Mm. It's like, um, even though I don't really, <laughs> he's my member. He, I live in his electorate, but I, I still don't think of think that I like him that much, but I do enjoy, you know, I'm glad. Yeah. That Did you meet Albo? Cause he like, cause since he follows the black heartbreakers, uh, like that's so weird to me that yeah, the prime minister yeah, yeah. follows. Uh, the, follows there's a story to that band. cause he's obsessed with, um, radio Birdman. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> you saw that Instagram story. <laughs> oh dude. my God. Right. <laughs> Yeah, okay. No, no, I haven't seen it, but I mean, just the fact that the Prime Minister's like, yeah, these are good band, like, yeah, yeah. not bad. I, yeah. I had to go check that for myself, and I was like, fuck Yeah, off. no, I just wanted to show my political clout a bit on that. Yeah. <laughs> I organised that, and I'm the only one who lives in his electorate. So <laughs> just, <laughs> and I'm, yeah, um, he was, um, what was it? He was wearing a Radio Birdman shirt for Record Store Day, and I'd seen him at a Radio Birdman gig that we played at a factory floor. One time mm. it was in the small room. But he was just around but years ago. So I just commented on his Instagram post for, you know, um, Australian band shirt day. Australian band shirt day. He was wearing a Birdman shirt. And I just commented, like, saw you at our show, you know, with them. And then next thing, Albo MP oh, follows. follows. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, wow. And now he's the prime minister. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just, um, it's very funny, you know. Yeah. That was another thing. It's like, um. Actually, you know, you're talking about reactions when I said, I reckon the PM should follow me instead of my old band because I'm the only one who lives in his electorate. Um, someone messaged me saying, is your head connected to your mouth? Like, you know, <laughs> is your brain connected to your mouth? <laughs> and so that was a reaction. What we were talking about before, someone reacting to me badly <laughs> about, <laughs> about a joke, you know. Well, at least you're taking up real estate in their mind. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. But unlike the liberal government, you live in rent free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Ed, I want to thank you for coming in oh, as we start you. to wrap up. Yeah. Um, Go look for the future. Go look with the album. And awesome. we can do to help. Yeah. We, yeah. we will do. Well, I'll be here. Yeah. yeah. And uh, if you'd like to play us a song. I can play you guys a song. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I might play my next single. But yeah. I think we'll end the show with that. Yep. Beautiful. Guys, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ed Barnes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you thank to you Ed. Guys. Thank you to this new studio. Thank you to the That's floods. Amazing. Thank you to the insurance companies. <laughs> thank you to everyone. Thank you, Hamish. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. This is Ed Barnes with his new single. Thank you, guys. Hey, um, my name is Ed Barnes. I would like to thank the West Underground for having me, and I also want to congratulate them on their brilliant new studio. Cheers. My name is Ed Barnes. This song's called All Things. You can take the TV. I never used it anyway. Only when we watched Twin Peaks and played Nintendo games Now our lives are in boxes with hearts no longer open And I spent my yesterday working out which of these are broken You can take the Beatles and I will take the Who You can take the Rolling Stones and bought those ones for you We had a big collection, an even bigger connection as our favourite George record says All things must pass Did we buy that one in New York Detroit or Chicago Amoeba Hollywood Or Amoeba San Francisco We travelled many miles And we went down hand in hand We shopped in every aisle We didn't care If they were second hand you can take Bob Dylan, and I'll take Marvin Gaye. You can take Led Zeppelin, I never liked them anyway. We had a big collection, an even bigger connection. That's our favourite George record says. All things must pass.
that never really hit me That the times they are a-changing Now with so many records come so many memories Like when we saw McCartney All the way in Coachella Or when we saw Paul Weller Sing a town called Malice And at one time at Brian Wilson He's not capturing the intermission For that copy of Pet Sounds We listen to it every day And wouldn't it be nice to think That one day we could both agree The music that we loved Made us who we both are today Today, today, today You can take Paul Simon You can take Carol King Patty Smith, in fact, you can have everything. We had a big collection, an even bigger connection. But as our favourite George Record says, all things must pass. And babe, you know, we really had a boss. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, West Underground.